Hi everyone, welcome to Power365 Solutions Power Series. If you'd like to know more about what we're trying to achieve in the series, then you can refer back to Tom's previous video where he gives an overview of what's coming up in the future. In this particular video, we're going to look at some of the fundamentals in regards to setting up your data diverse environment within Azure Security Group, how to decide on your solution structure and what we implement at Power365 Solutions, and then also looking at configuring some of the basic settings for your data diverse environment. One of the most important prerequisite parts when creating a data diverse environment is ensuring that you have the correct Azure Security Group attached to prevent unnecessary access to your organization's data. In order to create the security group, you need to go to portal.azure.com. It's important to note that at this point, you may need different privileges from what you have within your data diverse environments. You're going to need global administrator or delegated admin privileges within Azure. So to create my group, I need to go obviously to portal.azure.com, either select groups in the top banner, or you can search in the search bar for groups. As soon as I click the groups, I'll see all those that belong to my organization or all those that I have access to be able to see. To create a new one, I simply select the button for new group. I can choose the security group type. In this instance, it's gonna be a security. I can configure the group name, group description, configure whether I'd like AD roles to be assigned to the group, and I can also configure the membership type. So I'll quickly configure some of these settings. When I'm done configuring some of the settings, I can press create and it will go off and create my Azure AD security group. In this instance, it's important to note that you want to configure the owners to be the specific IT administrators within your organization. And the members you can configure later on as we talk about the security architecture within your data diverse environment. For now, you can leave it as manual assignation to this, to this particular security group. And we can talk about the dynamic users and dynamic devices in later series. When I press create, you can see that my security group for Power365 Solutions Power Series is now created. The next step is going to be to go and provision your Dataverse environment. To do that, we need to click a new tab and go to admin.powerplatform.com. When you navigate to admin.powerplatform.com, you can see all your environments by selecting environments from the left hand pane. Here you can see all the environments that you have the ability to configure or potentially amend. In order to create a new environment, we simply select new from the taskbar. Here you can configure some properties such as the name, the default region, the type of the sandbox, the purpose, choose whether you want to create a database for the environment, or you can choose whether you want to pay as you go with Azure. We're going to keep things nice and simple here. We're going to provide a name. We're going to leave the region as a default. This is really important uh, because it provides quicker access to your data but you need to ensure that you kind of get this right from the offset because this defines pretty much most of the behavior within your Dataverse environment. We'll also configure the type, whether it's sandbox, trial and subscription base, a production or simply a trial. In this instance, we'll leave it as a sandbox. You can then provide a purpose for the environment. In this instance, we're gonna need a Dataverse environment. So we are gonna create a database for this environment. And we're also not going to choose to pay as you go with Azure. We're going to be on subscription base and licenses here. Then you can choose next. Then it asks you for some additional parameters, such as the language. In this instance, we're just using English. You can configure a custom domain here. The P365 Power Series. Here you can also choose your default currency. We'll leave this as Great British Pounds. You can choose whether you want to enable some Dynamics 365 applications if you have the relevant licenses. In this instance, we'll leave it as no. You can choose whether you'd like to deploy some sample apps and data. Again, in this instance, we'll leave this as no. And this is where you have the opportunity to apply the security group to the environment. I'll press save and my information will load. Here it goes off and starts provisioning the environment. This is where it takes up to around 30 to 40 minutes. So you might want to go make yourself a cup of tea. I'll go do that and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I've made it back from my cup of tea. I can now see that successfully Power365 Solutions environment has been provisioned. I'll receive an email to that effect. Let me know that it's been completed. 
So what I want to do now is, is take a look at my Dataverse environment and start configuring some solutions. So to do that, I need to go to make.powerapps.com. I need to ensure that I've got the correct environment selected from the navigation pane. In this instance, we've got the Power365 Solutions Power Series. Then we can take a look at the solutions in the bottom left-hand corner. Here I have the ability to create new solutions, import existing solutions, change some publishers or create a new publisher. I can see some of the solution history as well. So the first thing we want to do when you're creating a solution is make sure that you've got a publisher to define it against. For our purposes, we're going to be using a P365 Solutions Publisher. So to do that, you can either do uh, create a new solution and create a new publisher from this designer. Alternatively, you can click the Publishers tab and select New Publisher from here. Here you can configure some of the properties. You can also choose to define a contact for the individual publisher. In the instance of using your organization, you'd make sure that these details are populated so that somebody can contact you if they have queries regarding your solution. I'll simply select Save. Now I've got a publisher to work with for our solution structure. So how are we going to split out our solutions? So this is where some of the Power365 solutions best practices come into play. We like to make sure that all our solutions are split horizontally. That means that we define them by component type rather than per feature. This is to ensure that we don't have many cross dependencies. What I'll do is that I'll splash a diagram on screen and we'll talk through some solution layering fundamentals. So what we have on the screen here is a visual representation of how layers react within the Dataverse environment. So your layering occurs on import when you use managed solutions. So the layers describe the dependency chain from a component of the root solution included in it through to the solution that extends the changes of that component's behavior. So the layers are created through extension of an existing component, so taking a dependency on it, or through the creation of a new component or version in the solution. So that essentially means that when you're using managed solutions, as we should be outside of our development environments, you need to ensure that your solution layering is correct or that you don't have cross dependencies throughout your solutions. To avoid this, we use some solution layering technique called horizontal layering. That's where we split out obviously per component type. So we'll give a little bit of example of how that looks in terms of solutions when we start creating them. But this visual representation is really important to take away from this session. So we need to ensure that we understand that the unmanaged layer, so the active customization layer, will always sit on top and it doesn't have any verticals to it. It doesn't have any hierarchy. It just sits in one massive merged layer at the top. And that's always gonna be the closest one to the application behavior. This is why we need to take uh, absolute precaution when it comes to making any live customization changes within your UAT environment or your production environment. You're gonna see a lot of issues if you start to utilize active customizations within these environments because your managed solutions that you import, the changes will never take from those. They'll always take precedence from the unmanaged layer. So it's essential that we don't have unmanaged layers sitting on top of our managed layers if we want that to be the application behavior. So the components within a managed solution are hierarchical. The ones that appear are the ones that are closest to the application layer. So if I have multiple components appearing in multiple solutions and there is a cross dependency, the one that was the latest imported will always be the one that appears in the application behavior. This becomes really important when you're trying to surface the customization changes that you desire. You need to ensure that you've got your solution structure set up correctly from the offset. This is one of the most important components when it comes to structuring your Dataverse environment and the application lifecycle management of your environments from development instances straight through to your production instance. So let's kick back into make.powerapps and see how we do things at P365. So let's start creating some solutions within my Dataverse environment. To do that, ensure that you're in the make.powerapps.com maker, go to solutions and select new solution from the ribbon bar. Here you can configure some standard properties and we're gonna start creating these solutions per the component type as previously mentioned. Just give it a display name, select the name. You'll be able to create the default publisher or associate the publisher that you've just created. You can choose the version of the solution to start with. 
And you can also choose things like a configuration page or a description for that particular solution. So let's quickly create all these solutions and then we'll revisit it later on. So all my solutions have now been created and a description has been associated for each detail and what would be required in each individual solution. As you can see here, we've split things out by component type, as we've always mentioned throughout this video. This ensures that we're not gonna run into dependency issues on import. We're not gonna run into cross dependency issues because things within the solution should only be based per the component type. For instance, we should only have web resources contained in the 010 web resources solution. Likewise with the tables and choices, the security roles, plugins, and so forth. It's important to note that this isn't what we implement for every single customer, but this does help us in a lot of instances as a baseline to start with. When you're running a CICD pipeline, which we'll be touching upon in, in later videos, you'll know that configuring additional solutions or continually adding different solutions becomes quite complicated. So starting off with a base with this horizontal solution technique means that you don't have to go in and amend your CICD pipeline on a regular basis. And you're gonna avoid those cross dependencies when you're doing merge or commits within that particular branch. So hopefully this makes sense. Uh, as I said, this is different dependent on customer, dependent on size of project, and then a lot of different variables. But this is a kind of standard enterprise approach that we may take. We'll tend to group things by their component type and contain them within a single solution in order to make it simple when deploying upstream. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna take a look at some of the settings that we would configure within your Dataverse environment. But at this point in time, your developers can start creating things within the solution containers. To configure your environment settings, you need to go to admin.powplatform.com. Again, selecting environments from the left-hand navigation bar, then selecting the environment that you've just previously created. Once that's open, we have the ability to select the settings from the navigation bar again. Here you can configure all sorts of features with your Dataverse environment. We're not gonna dive into each individual feature here because they are very specific to your delivery or your particular organization. So it is just worth noting some new features in this designer because you still have the ability to navigate between these settings and the classic settings within your Dataverse environment. But we're gonna try and focus on all these kind of new features that Microsoft are gonna be pushing towards us. Notably, you'll find these either in your behavior or your features elements of the settings area. So let's just take a look at some of the features that we can do. Here you've got some cool stuff surrounding the AI builder. Your embedded content of Power BI visualizations is something that we like to turn on. Also configuring things like your Dataverse search as opposed to using the advanced find features. When we scroll down, you can also see that you can restrict your advanced find options. And you can also enable some things that are preview features. It's important to note at this point that you shouldn't be using anything that's in preview within your productionized environments, as there may be some functionality that's missing from there, or that may be prone to bugs. So here you can have a play, go through and see which features suit your particular environment or your organization. So there's lots of cool things that keep funneling in here on a week by week basis. And probably by the time of watching this video, there's some new features in here that I may have missed. So it's important to note that you need to configure these default settings from, from the initial delivery of your um, Dataverse environment. If you go back to the area, you can see that you can configure things such as your email settings, your document management and integration pieces. You can configure your audit logs and user permissions. With the user permissions, we're gonna leave these for now and it's gonna be something that we set up later on in, down the series. So hopefully this has been useful. Um, it's very basic surrounding the simple concepts with Dataverse environments. If you've got any comments, please leave them below. This is very much how we do things at PA365 and it's not a standard script that you should follow. And again, as mentioned throughout the video, this does differ dependent on the specific delivery that you're providing or your organizational needs. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Please do subscribe, please set on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Shh. <laughs>